hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to, the Bo welcome to Boston as we celebrate the 245th anniversary of the signing of the Declaration of Independence. My name is Lieutenant Colonel Lee Fife, retired U.S. Army National Guard. <clears throat> Winston Churchill once said that American democracy is the worst form of government, except for all the other forms that have been tried. It is the initiation of that democracy, the signing of the Declaration of Independence that we celebrate here in Boston today as we have for well over 242 years. Our celebration is dedicated to the men and women of the United States Armed Forces. We will begin, at, we will begin today with our traditional ceremony, followed by Boston's Independence Day Parade. First stop on our parade route will be the Granary Burial Ground for a short ceremony in the laying of wreaths at the graves of John Hancock, Peter Faneuil, Robert Treat Payne, Samuel Adams, and Crispus Attucks. The parade will then continue to the Old State House for the annual 4th of July reading of the Declaration of Independence. Joining me here on the stage this morning, City Councilors Ed Flynn and Michelle Wu, Brigadier General John Driscoll, Commander, Massachusetts Army National Guard, Mayor Kim Janey, Ms. Kate Davis, Director, Office of Tourism, Sports and Entertainment, Commissioner of Veterans Services for the City of Boston, Robert Santiago, Captain Robert Inlick, Captain Commanding of the Ancient Honorable Artillery Company and his staff, First Lieutenant David Champa, Second Lieutenant Timothy Harridan, and Adjutant Command Sergeant Major Carlos Ramos Rivera. The Ancient Honorable Artillery Company of Massachusetts holds the distinction of being the oldest chartered military organization in North America and the third oldest chartered military organization in the world. And last but not least, vocalist Dana Whiteside. <clears throat> Captain Imlick, commanding of the Ancient Honorable Artillery Company, kindly have your adjutant, Command Sergeant Major Ramos Rivera, call the parade to attention and present arms for the singing of the national anthem by Dana Whiteside, accompanied by the Zaba military band, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars 
through the perilous fight. O'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, said all that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. I don't know about you, but that brings chills to me every time I hear Dana sing that. Thank you, Dana. It is now my honor to introduce a 20-year retired Navy veteran in the City of Boston as Veterans Services Commissioner to lead us to the Pledge of Allegiance, Commissioner Robert Santiago. Accompanying Commissioner, Santi Accompanying Commissioner Santiago is Dennis Pimentel, Commission Chairman, USS Massachusetts Commissioning Committee, and Sailors, Chief Yeoman, Reshi Chapter, Chapa, Machinist Mate, Nuclear Second Class, Nicholas Silver. Electricians Mate, Nuclear Second Class, Donovan London. Culinary Specialist, Seaman Michael Pakinis. Commissioner. Thank you, Colonel. Not sure if uh, I'd be able to follow up that rendition of the Star Spangled Banner, but it was, it was amazing. Thank you, Daniel. Um, for all civilians, please uncover, hand over heart. Everyone in uniform, hand salute. Please feel free to recite with me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. It is now my distinct privilege to introduce the mayor of the city of Boston, Kim Janey, is the 55th mayor of Boston. Mayor Janey is, the leading, is, <clears throat> is leading Boston through the COVID-19 pandemic with a citywide agenda for recovery, reopening, and renewal. A proud fourth generation Roxbury resident, Mayor Janey, comes from a long line of educators, entrepreneurs, artists, advocates. Mayor Janey. Good morning. Good morning. I want to thank Colonel Fife for that introduction and for all he has done and for his service to our country. I want to thank Dana Whiteside for that lovely rendition of our national anthem. Thank you so much. I want to thank uh, Commissioner Robert Santiago for your service. Certainly, I want to acknowledge uh, General Driscoll. I want to acknowledge the electeds that are here, my good friends, Councilor Flynn and Councilor Wu, who have joined us. I'm old enough to remember the bicentennial 45 years ago. I was 11 years old, and it was such an exciting time thinking about 200 years, the 200th birthday of our country. At 11 years old, there was a lot to celebrate in terms of the fireworks and everything that made that bicentennial special. I also remember that fall that I would go off to school, to middle school, as I was bused during court-ordered desegregation. 
And standing here 45 years later as the 55th mayor, representing how far our city has come is truly amazing. I'm so excited to celebrate our nation's birthday. Personally, I love birthdays. Birthdays are my favorite time of year. It is a time of renewal. It is a second chance to get it right. And as we celebrate our nation's birth, as we continue to do the work to perfect our union, I hope we don't lose sight of the work that remains to truly make sure our nation is the land of the free and the home of the brave for all of us. That is the work that we are doing here in Boston as we continue to ensure that all of our residents have a place to call home. And I am so grateful for all of our servicemen and women who protect our nation every single day, whether here on our land or away. I'm really grateful to all of our residents who continue to do the work every single day to lift up the values and the ideals of our nation, to make sure that we are living out that truth every single day. So I won't speak long. I just want to say happy birthday. 245 years of our nation is a great thing to celebrate. Let's continue to do the work every single day to make sure we're living out those ideals and our values. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Jenny. And um, to uh, my rush of um, acknowledging the councilman, I had um, missed one of our counselors. So I'd like at this time to acknowledge Anissa Savi George, counselor. And now the Zaba, <clears throat> and now the Zaba Shea Band under the direction of Mr. Frank Zaba will play Stars and Stripes Forever.
Ladies and gentlemen, the, the mayor of Boston, Mayor Gianni. Good morning. What an amazing birthday party for our nation. Good morning. We're here to celebrate the 4th of July as Independence Day for our nation. And Boston is the birthplace of our country. And so we have a lot to be proud of here as we continue to lead our nation not just a nation of first, but a nation, uh, a, a city of first, but a city that has done the best. And we have to continue to do that work to make sure that we are living up to the ideals of our country where we can all live freely in America and in the city of Boston. So I'm just so grateful for the opportunity to celebrate with you this morning, the 245th birthday of our nation. Let's continue to make sure that Boston is strong and stronger than ever before. Happy birthday. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Boston as we celebrate the 245th anniversary of the signing of the Declaration of Independence. <clears throat> How appropriate that we are here today, just outside the building, on March 5th, 1770, five men were among the first casualties of the battle for independence in what would later be known as the Boston Massacre. From 1771 through 1782, a patriotic oration had been given from this very balcony. On July 18th, 1776, the Declaration of Independence was first proclaimed to the citizens of Boston from this very spot. As in revolutionary times, I ask our trumpeter to sound assembly. I now call upon the City of Boston's Veteran Services Commissioner, Robert Santiago, to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. All civilians, please uncover, right hand over heart. All those in uniform, hand salute. Please feel free to recite with me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <clears throat> and now Captain Imlich, Captain Commanding of the H and Honorable Artillery, company will read the Declaration of Independence. Good morning. An action.
of the Second Continental Congress, July 4, 1776, the unanimous declaration of the 13 United States of America. When in the course of human events it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another and to assume amongst the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the, na which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them, a decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that their creator, endowed by, endowed by the creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. To secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their powers from the consent of the governed, that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and to institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. Prudence, indeed, will dictate that governments long established should not be changed for light and transient causes. And accordingly, all experience hath shown that mankind are more disposed to suffer while evils are sufferable than are to right themselves by abolishing the forms to which they are accustomed. But when a long train of abuses and usurpations pursuing inevitably to the object invinces a design to reduce them under absolute deposition, it is their right, it is their duty, to throw off such government and to provide new guards for their future security. Such has been the patient sufferance of these colonies, and such is now in the necessity which constrains them to alter their former systems of government. The history of the present King of Great Britain is a history of repeated injuries and usurpations all having a direct object, the establishment of absolute tyranny over these states. To prove this, let facts be submitted to a candid world. He has refused his assent to, to laws, the most wholesome and necessary for the public good. He has forbidden his governors to pass laws of immediate and pressing importance, unless suspended in their operation till his assent should be obtained and when so suspended, he has utterly neglected to attend to them. He has refused to pass other laws for the accommodation of large districts of people, unless those people would relinquish the right of representation in the legislature, a right inestimable to them, informidable to tyrants only. He has called together legislative bodies at places unusual, uncomfortable, and distant from the depository of their public records for the sole purpose of fatiguing them into compliance with his measures. He has dissolved representative houses repeatedly for opposing with manly firmness his invasions on the rights of the people. He has refused for a long time after such dissolutions to cause others to be elected, whereby the legislative powers incapable of annihilation have returned to the people at large for their exercise. The state remaining in the meantime exposed to all of the dangers of invasion from without and convolutions within. He has endeavored to prevent the population of these states for that purpose obstructing the laws for naturalization of foreigners, refusing to pass others to encourage their migrations hither in rising the conditions of new appropriations of lands. He has obstructed the administration of justice by refusing his assent to laws for establishing judiciary power. He has made judges dependent on his will alone for the tenure of their offices and the amount and payment of their salaries. 
he has erected a multitude of new offices and sent hither swarms of officers to harass our people and eat out their substance. He has kept among us, in times of peace, standing armies without the consent of our legislature. He has affected to render the military independent of and superior to the civil power. He has combined with others to subject us to a jurisdiction foreign to our Constitution and unacknowledged by our laws, giving his assent to their acts of pretended legislation, for quartering large bodies of armed troops amongst us, for protecting them by a mock trial from punishment for any murders which they should commit on the inhabitants of these states, for cutting off our trade with all parts of the world, for imposing taxes on us without our consent, for depriving us, in many cases, of the benefits of trial by jury, for transporting us beyond seas to be tried for pretended offenses, for abolishing the free system of English laws in a neighboring province, establishing therein an arbitrary government and enlarging its boundaries so as to render it at once an example and fit instrument for the introducing the same absolute rule into these colonies, for taking away our charters, abolishing our most valuable laws, and altering fundamentally the forms of our government, for suspending our own legislatures and declaring themselves invested with power to legislate for us in all cases whatsoever. He has abdicated government here by declaring us out of his protection and waging war against us. He has plundered our seas, ravished our coasts, burnt our towns, and destroyed the lives of our people. He is, at this time, transporting large armies of foreign mercenaries to complete the works of death, dissolution, and tyranny already begun with circumstances of cruelty and perfidy, scarcely paralleled in the most barbarous ages and totally unworthy of the head of a civilized nation. He has constrained our fellow citizens taken captive on the high seas to bear arms against their, their country, to become the executioners of their friends and brethren, or to fall themselves by their hands. He has excited domestic insurrections amongst us and has endeavored to bring on the inhabitants of our frontiers, the merciless Indian savages, whose known rule of warfare is an undistinguished destruction of all ages, sexes, and conditions. In every stage of these oppressions, we have petitioned for redress in the most humble terms. Our repeated petitions have been answered only by repeated injury. A prince, whose character is thus marked by every act which may define a tyrant, is unfit to be the ruler of a free people. Nor have we been wanting in attentions to our British brethren. We have warned them from time to time of attempts by their legislature to extend an unwarrantable jurisdiction over us, we have reminded them of the circumstances of our immigration and settlement here. We have appealed to their native justice and magnanimity. And we have conjured them by the ties of our common kindred to disavow these usurpations, which would inevitably interrupt our connections and correspondence. They too have been deaf to the voice of justice and of consanguinity. We must therefore acquiesce in the necessity which denounces our separation and hold them as we hold the rest of mankind, enemies in war, in peace, friends. We therefore, the representatives of the United States of America, in general Congress, assembled appealing to the Supreme Judge of the world for the rectitude of our intentions do in the name and by the authority of the good people of these colonies, solemnly publish and declare 
that these United Colonies are and of ought right to be free and independent states. That they are absolved from all allegiance to the British Crown and that all political connection between them and the state of Great Britain is and ought to be totally dissolved and that as free and independent states they have full power to levy war, conclude peace, contract alliance, establish commerce, and do all other acts and things which independent states may of right do. And for the support of this declaration, with a firm reliance on the protection of divine province, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. On behalf of the ancient and honorable artillery company of Massachusetts, welcome to Boston. We hope you all have a very happy 4th of July. It, fe it feels great to once again be able to gather after not having this ceremony last year. And let us not forget why we celebrate this holiday. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. It is my great privilege and honor as a native of Boston, Roxbury, to be with you all and to lend my voice in the celebration of this great holiday celebrating freedom in America, wishing you all the happiest of Independence Days. As the storm clouds gather far across the sea, let us swear allegiance to a land that's free. Let us all be grateful for a land so fair as we lift our voices in a solemn prayer. God bless America. Land that I love, stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans white with foam, God bless America, my home, sweet home. God bless America, land that I love, stand beside her and guide her through the 
night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans wide with foam. God bless America, my home sweet home. God bless America, my home sweet home. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, Dana Whiteside. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, this will conclude today's Old State House ceremony and also conclude our 245th Independence Day ceremony. We thank you for your attendance and hope you enjoy your stay in Boston and wish you all a safe and healthy 4th of July. Thank you. <laughs>